When I went back to read and research what was known about Jesus, I found that, if nothing else, he was an amazing teacher, storyteller, healer, activist, and political revolutionary in his time. And that his essential teachings were not at all about judgment and rules and sending people to a hell in the hereafter, but are about love and forgiveness and bringing heaven here on earth. And that's how this practicing Buddhist, this skeptic and scholar and activist, has come to roll away the stone in my heart that had kept Jesus shrouded and in the dark. And the Jesus who I rediscovered is the embodiment of radical love and inclusion. He and his followers like a good story, just like we do. He strived to change the culture of his society to be more just and loving, just like we do. He demonstrated with his life that all people are included in God's love by befriending tax collectors and prostitutes and Samaritans, both rich and poor, and creating the most inclusive community that the world had ever known, just like we're doing. He critiqued and debated and sought to reform the dominant religion of his day, just like we do. So if you are among those who have Jesus dead and buried in a damp, dark cave on the outskirts of your life, this Easter, I invite you to roll away the stone and allow Jesus to return to life, to your life, in a way that is truly meaningful to you. But there's one more way in which this is an Easter church. Since becoming a minister, I've learned a powerful lesson about resurrection. Not Jesus' resurrection, but our own. I have had the privilege to be with people in their struggles, to pull themselves out of the own deaths of their spirit, brought on by alcohol or drugs, depression or despair. And I've witnessed time and time again in the opening of the tomb of their own soul and watch them come back to life in a new form. And this morning, as my wife Anitra and I brought our daughter, Lila, before you to dedicate her, I'm reminded of our own journey of renewal and rebirth. And as a matter of fact, when we did that ceremony moments earlier, we forgot the part where you stand up and, and actually pledge your dedication. And that's really important to me, so I would ask... If uh, you all, if Anitra, if you would come out to the middle and if everyone would stand up. <laughs> or you could just sit right there if she's sleeping and we're going to stand up. <laughs> if you all, if the congregation would please rise and say with me the words of dedication in your order of service. And just kind of aim your voices right there. <laughs> I appreciate that. Now we, people of this church, Amen. Thank you. So, as I said, I was, I'm reminded this morning in light of the dedication of our third child of the journey that we've taken to renewal and rebirth in our own lives. It was as if we had died when we lost our daughter, Sienna three years ago. I would be, rather be nailed to a cross myself and left out in the sun to die than lose a child. For a while, I was so angry and depressed about the fact that I could not resurrect her that I failed to realize that ultimately it was my life that needed to be resurrected. 
Finally, I realized that the best way to honor my daughter was to remember her and to bring her love and the joy that she gave me into many aspects of, as many aspects of my life as possible and to live fully and completely. And through the love of this congregation and my family and many friends and the blessings of a living God, I discovered the power of resurrection and renewal of the human soul. For me, that potential for resurrection in each of us, despite the greatest losses and pain, despite the greatest of losses and pain, no matter how terrible the storm may be, the sun will rise again. That's an Easter hope that's alive in this place. And that's what we celebrate here today. And all the rest is commentary. Happy Easter. I love you. Amen.